India on Sunday welcomed the power sharing deal announced by Afghanistan between President Ashraf Ghani and his rival Abdullah Abdullah which ended months of political discord triggered by last year's disputed presidential election. The Ministry of External Affairs said India hoped the political agreement and creation of a council for national reconciliation will result in renewed efforts for establishing enduring peace and stability and putting an end to externally sponsored terrorism and violence in Afghanistan. According to the deal, Ghani will stay as the president while Abdullah will helm the High Council of National Reconciliation with executive authority and his team will have a 50% share in the cabinet. The HCNR has been mandated to lead future peace talks, including with the Taliban. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze the Afghan situation and India. Joining me on the program today are Shakti Sinha, foreign affairs expert, Vivek Karju, former ambassador, and Major General Shashi Astana, retired strategic expert. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Ambassador, let me begin the program with you. Let's uh, Before we get to the... Uh, peace sharing deal. Let's talk about a couple of statements that have come out from the Taliban. We'll take it. We'll start from there. There have been more recent, and then we'll get to the uh, you know to the uh, power sharing deal. The first statement, of course, coming from uh, you know the negotiator in Qatar, the Taliban's negotiator in Qatar, Stanik Zai, who has said that India has played a negative role for 40 years in Afghanistan. But if India changes its stand as far as Afghanistan is concerned, the Taliban can meet us halfway. What do you make of that statement? I would put uh, more significance to the informal soundings that the Taliban have been sending us for years now. I think uh, they've been wanting to establish open contacts with us. And in I, my understanding is that in these informal sort of contacts or informal interactions, which were very sporadic, which took place, they were conveying that they were not hostile to India and that they should not be considered by India as Pakistani puppets. The formal statement that Stanik Zai has made about India's role well, it's a, the articulation of an opening position. And uh, in diplomacy, uh, it is quite common for, con for organizations and countries to make opening positions and then start a process of negotiations. So I'm not defending the Taliban. The Taliban has an ideology which is quite, uh, which has still now been quite antithetical to all that we stand for. I think the Taliban's role in Afghanistan has not been in keeping with our interests. They've indulged, at least sections of the Taliban have indulged in violence. But I have for the last three years felt that a stage had come when the Taliban were gaining international legitimacy, when the Taliban were had established a certain presence in the post 2001 world and that it was time that India shed its policy of shunning them. Now, let me hasten to add this does not mean an endorsement of what the Taliban stand for or its activities. But this is how the diplomatic game is played. And if you don't play this game, if a country deliberately avoids playing this game, then it tends to keep itself out of an important segment of play, which has been the case in Afghanistan. And therefore, it has been my contention that uh, the time has come now, and I've written about this, I wrote about this only yesterday once again, that uh, the time has come when we must have open contacts with the Taliban, just as we must have contacts with all important political players in Afghanistan and, of course, support the Ghani government. But that support can't be exclusive as it has been in the present situation. Okay. All right. That having been said and talking about statements, I'm going to take the point that uh, the ambassador was making forward with you, Mr. Sinha, about how the Taliban has been sending feelers to India that it is not hostile for some time now. Another feeler came, you know, earlier this week. 
when the spokesperson of the Taliban in Afghanistan said that Kashmir is an internal issue really as far as uh, uh, they are concerned and Delhi need not be concerned. Now, where is all of this coming from and what does it mean? One, of course, you know, we tend to see the Taliban as one monolith of Pakistani proxy and leave it at that. But that is being very lazy. You must understand, a very large section of them are Pashtun nationalists or even Afghan nationalists. They have an idea of Afghanistan in the world. They were not in the business of exporting. Al-Qaeda was in the business of exporting Islamism all over the world, not the Taliban. Taliban has always limited itself to Afghanistan. For some time now, they have been saying things, I think at least five, seven years ago, their spokesman told, we would like to see India engage in Afghanistan as a valuable development partner. They have not attacked any of the school buildings, other assets that we have created with the Afghan communities, etc. Then last year, when the Kashmir thing was, changes were made in 370, and the Pakistani foreign minister immediately said, India must be restrained on Kashmir, else we will not cooperate on Afghanistan peace process. Within hours, the Afghan spokesperson went public by saying, please do not link Kashmir with Afghanistan. I mean, if these are not statements enough to the world and to you, I think what else would they want them to come up? To come up and say, okay, we are ready to surrender to you. That being very impractical, as Ambassador Kaju was very nicely explaining, you know, in a diplomatic engagement, you take certain positions to start your engagement. But just don't look at one statement out of the context. Look at the whole pattern. If you see the pattern of behavior, to the best of my knowledge, in the last five, seven years, not, no action of Taliban can be seen as being anti-India in that specific sense. Yes, anti the Afghan government, who are your friends, fine. That is a good point, but that is not the complete picture. So I think we should therefore be more nuanced in our approach to it. This is a val important section of Afghan society. Do I agree with them? Absolutely no. Does it mean can I ignore them? No. That would be actually foolish to do so. Okay. General, I'd like to bring you in here now. You know, as far as the Taliban is concerned, is the Taliban of today very different from the Taliban of 20 years ago? What's changed really as far as the Taliban is concerned? Uh, firstly, as far as Taliban is concerned, let's analyze the entire situation from what is the aim of Taliban. The aim of Taliban is certainly governance of, of Afghanistan and it has got nothing to do with Kashmir. As far as Kashmir is concerned, that is the agenda of Pakistan and not Taliban. So there were, in addition to the statement which you made, there were a social media campaigning also to say that Taliban is talking about uh, taking Kabul and then Kashmir and things like that, which actually happened to be a uh, information warfare of Pakistan and not Taliban. And that is what Taliban spokesperson has actually clarified. Second, I see this development where you started the discussion uh, of power sharing as a positive one for the reason because uh, this was firstly overdue and secondly, in absence of that, Taliban was getting strong. Thirdly, I agree with both the panelists what they are saying. We cannot put all eggs in President Ghani's basket because the stakes of ours in Afghanistan are far too high than what is happening actually internally there. As far as we are concerned, our focus must be very clear. The international north-south transportation corridor is very, very crucial to us if we have to connect to CAR, if we have to connect to Eurasia. And in that context, Char Baha becomes important to us. Now, like it or not, as both the panelists have brought out, Afghanistan uh, in Afghanistan, Taliban is a force to reckon with. And they are a stakeholder. You cannot deny it. You cannot wish it away. If that be so, and if we have to fulfill our aim and our national interest of connecting to Eurasia and connecting to uh, the uh, Central Asian republics, we will have to work through Taliban. And in that context, may not be directly, but maybe by track 2, track 1.5 or by other means, certainly uh, there is a case for opening up to Taliban. Uh, the US peace deal maker, when he was in Delhi, I am sure he didn't come to Delhi just for uh, just like that. So obviously the message uh, which is indirectly being conveyed is uh, that certainly uh, you should be talking to Taliban. 
as far as us taliban peace deal is concerned now you see the contours of that that deal is not for peace in afghanistan that is that should be very clear that deal is for a reasonable honorable exit of usa from afghanistan because the deal does not have a one underlining line to say that ceasefire will be uh, is part of that deal now if that is not the case certainly uh, that deal does not promise anything as far as the stability or peace in afghanistan is concerned in any case i am always of the opinion that a foreign prescription for peace in afghanistan will never work it has to be afghanistan own uh, initiative and it has to be a intra afghan uh, arrangement which can certainly work better than all other methodologies okay all right so you know uh, a quick uh, reaction to that and then let's talk about the power sharing uh, deal as well uh, ambassador you know uh, as far as india is concerned have we lost the plot or do you believe that we still have a major role to play in afghanistan and the players there want us to play that role or not i think uh, the afghans want india to be involved uh, not in the internal affairs but they want us because we are the region's most important power we are an emerging power and above everything else despite the connections of the taliban with pakistan my experience is that all afghans want a counterfoil to pakistan that being the case india needs to have a presence now the question is do we deny ourselves a role on the table when peace making is taking place only yesterday for the afghan uh, sort of uh, representatives of four countries on afghanistan special representatives of china pakistan russia and iran met and they issued a statement and that statement is very interesting the formulations but i won't go into that we don't have that that much time but the interesting thing is that on the one hand the americans have said that look because of the way you've handled afghanistan you don't still have a place on that table and on the other hand two countries that were with us in the 1990s and i know all this personally because as shakti would remember i was joint secretary handling all this in the ministry of external affairs for six long years while this game was being played iran and russia were with us and that was the time when we bitterly opposed the taliban and everything that they stood for but times change and with the change of times countries need to adapt again i will underline and i think that's a point shakti made too when you adapt when you engage you do not endorse you do not accept what the other man is saying but engagement is the name of the game so we haven't lost the plot but yes we have some catching up to do okay all right and your thoughts on the power sharing deal that has been reached between president ghani and abdullah abdullah well uh, the power sharing deal is a very welcome step quite clearly there were problems with this election just as there were problems with the 2014 election and with the 2009 election in on both those occasions 2009 and especially in 2014 i have no reluctance in in saying that my assessment was that abdullah was robbed of the election and i think this time around he stuck to his guns and finally an arrangement has been made uh, which hopefully will work executive authority gani gani was insisting should not be split so executive authority has not been split though of gudla's representatives will be there in government but more importantly the real game in afghanistan will now be peace making between kabul and the kabul elite and the taliban and abdullah will head this however it remains to be seen how abdullah and gani will gel on this most important point and that is still a question mark in my mind because above everything else behind the deal with the taliban apart from ideological issues uh, which will be many there will also be also be 
intra-ethnic issues that need to be sorted out because the non-Pashtuns have deep reservations about the Taliban and all that and their conduct. And you asked my last point, uh, Frank, you asked whether the Taliban, I think before we began this conversation, you asked whether the Taliban have evolved. Really, time will tell. Certainly, the Taliban of today are not the Taliban of Mullah Umar. They've seen a little more savvy about the world. They've interacted with the world far more and in some cases skillfully. So we'll really have to see how all this pans out. It will be a complex and very difficult process of Afghan reconciliation. And uh, we'll have to watch our interests very carefully while this continues. Absolutely. A complex and difficult situation lies ahead and it's certainly going to be challenging as far as India is concerned and all the all the, all the the players concerned as well in the region. But uh, taking the discussion forward now, Mr. Sinha, uh, you know, after bitterly, bitterly quarrelling since the election, you know, we saw what happened between Ghani and Abdullah. They seem to have put <coughs> their differences aside, at least for the time being, and worked out some kind of a power sharing, uh, you know, deal. Uh, what has prompted this really? Uh, in one word, survival. Survival has prompted it. But, uh, you know, I, uh, I wish I was as hopeful as Vivek about the deal. You know, in 2000, and Vivek is completely right, 2009 was a bad election. 2014 was a terrible election. In the first round, Abdullah had 45. There's no way he could have lost the election. Finally, the U.S. Secretary of State, Kerry, went down twice and hammered out a national unity government with an agenda. Ghani, unfortunately, could not live up to his bargain with the agenda, amending the constitution, moving on to a prime minister system of government, changing the election laws, etc., and deeply polarizing. His own vice president had to run away from him. I mean, his, his basically team had become a very sectarian team and was not very comfortable in team building, which is why he and Abdullah again had a fallout. And the last elections, of course, the less said about the 2019 elections, the better. Anyway, that is past tense now. Let us forget it. They have come together. Now, whether the sharing of power without executive power, when half the ministers will be Abdullah's ministers, Abdullah would have to be governor. How does it work out in terms of actual intrapersonal dynamics? That is important. I hope for the sake of Afghanistan, understanding that survival is at stake, these groups would come together, evolve common positions on it, and not get into one upmanship or a zero-sum game. At the end of the day, if Afghanistan has to move forward, incorporate the Taliban into its governance structures, and as, to, as of today, the Taliban is the strongest coherent political setup, let us say. Let us understand it. And therefore, all the version of why these people should get their act together, so that intra-Afghan dialogue leads to a constitution, leads to a settlement, leads to structures that are representative of the whole country. That is first priority, the development of Afghanistan. And that is what the way forward is. So I do hope that this deal which has been signed, details are awaited, are yet to be negotiated. We hope that those negotiations work out for the better because Afghanistan for survival, for its development and growth needs inclusive and a plural form of government, not a narrow sectarian government. That is the one, you know. Absolutely. And how do we achieve that inclusive government is really going to be the big question. And what needs to be done really remains to be seen. General, do you have any, you know, any suggestions, any ideas really as far as this is concerned? Do you see the Taliban and uh, the, the formal government in Afghanistan actually sitting down at the same table and trying to thrash out ideas and thrash out their differences and come together and, you know, have some kind of a common minimum working agenda going forward? Uh, see, as far as Taliban is concerned, uh, I would slightly uh, differ with some of with uh, Mr. Kardzu on one issue that as far as their intent and their leadership is concerned, they seems to be changing and they have perhaps changed with time. But as far as the lower rung cadre is concerned, they are still hardcore Sharia law um, supporters. And therefore, how they play out subsequently, that will that is yet to be seen. Number one. Number two. In a recent uh, cases where uh, the uh, ISKP leaders were killed and subsequently one guy was arrested and when the interrogation took place, the nexus between IS, Taliban, Al-Qaeda, 
Haqqani Network and some of the Pakistani organizations came out quite loud and clear. So therefore, Taliban is not as sane as it appears to be, yet Taliban is a stakeholder which everybody recognizes and I think the entire panel is, uh, is, is talking about it. Second thing is that as far as the power sharing is concerned, it is a compulsion. They know that divided they fall and they have far too many stakeholders like even in uh, when it comes to tribes, whether it is Pashtuns, Hazaras, Takis, Taziks, there is a fair amount of complexity as far as power sharing is concerned. So they have to be together, otherwise it is advantage Taliban anyway. Now, looking at the two, certainly they will have to perhaps compromise in some manner. And as I see, with IS also getting strong, from the security point of view, I see a caliphate in making. I see a radicalized uh, Afghanistan. I see various groups being controlled by various people. Kabul will remain under control of the so-called organized government. Certain other areas will remain on the control of uh, Taliban. There will be some areas which will be under control of IS. And therefore, it will. I don't very much see a situation improving in a near future. Certainly, all these things will have to be tested. There is a possibility for the benefit of their own, not for the benefit of Afghanistan per se, because that they have been talking for very long. Uh, for their own benefits and survivals, they may get together and they may give some kind of sane government and also with uh, certain challenges like COVID and uh, other things, uh, perhaps uh, they may feel that perhaps they need to give a reasonable government which uh, is well recognized by everybody and recognition is something which Taliban is also looking for and international recognition also matters to Taliban. It may not have mattered to them earlier, but today the new Taliban, as Mr. Kardzu puts it across, certainly looks at international recognition as well. And India has certainly has a role because we have our stakes. Three billion we have invested in the near future. If you count the entire money which we have invested in the development programs, right from the time when Taliban has been removed, it works out to almost about 10 odd billions, which is a heavy money for India. Similarly, our relevance and our recognition as a developmental partner is always there. And last thing which I must say, that Taliban is certainly not a puppet of Pakistan. When Taliban was in uh, government, they did not concede to Durand Line. They did not concede to the territory of Afghanistan by any standards to Pakistan. So certainly Taliban, even if they are in power, they will look at Afghanistan uh, as patriot Afghanistanis in their own way. They may have different structure to govern is a separate issue, which may contest, uh, which may not suit to our uh, thinking. But certainly uh, they are not compromising Afghanistan for the sake of friendship of Pakistan. Can I oh. add a sentence, Fran? Yeah, very easily. Just a sentence. Yes. Uh, where I disagree with the general slightly is that, you know, the reason why Russia and Iran are on the other side, so to say now, is precisely because Russia, Iran and the Taliban have a common understanding that IS is to be opposed. So while IS does have former Taliban in it, I would suspect that like the uh, Pakistanis gave up on the Mujahideen and developed the Taliban, they may tomorrow keep the IS as a backup card in case the Taliban don't listen to them. Absolutely. That's the there are several dynamics there and very complex situation. It's very difficult to see how, you know, we traverse talking about we. Let's talk about India. Closing comments from all my panelists now with the best way forward as far as India is concerned in Afghanistan, starting first with your ambassador. I think uh, one point I'll say that the fragmentation of Afghanistan in the months and years to come is a possibility. Hopefully, the different power centers in Afghanistan will act wisely uh, to prevent that possibility. And that is something that India needs to encourage by engaging all elements, by cautioning them, by, uh, by uh, not preaching to them, but by showing them that uh, fragmentation is a bad thing that compromises in multi-ethnic polities, in developing polities is important. I think uh, India has a fund of goodwill. They know that we don't intervene in their domestic processes, but that we are always there as, uh, as friends because our interests coincide. 
that is a process i hope we will encourage and for that process to take place an engagement with all sections of afghan opinion including the taliban is essential as far as the isis is concerned today i think they are beyond the pale the isis is a shadowy organization as far as i am concerned because one doesn't know entirely correctly what their membership is and right. if i would i tend to believe that the overwhelming majority of the afghan people also are not of the isis's ideological orientations right so okay. i don't see afghanistan as a caliphate in the making and think. that of course uh, can be avoided completely if there is no fragmentation absolutely general uh, i would go for a balanced approach as uh, the uh, as mr karju has mentioned we need to interact with all segments and all stakeholders for the reason because our interest must be very clear international north south transportation corridor is very important chabahar is very important and we were at a stage we conceived this project in 2001 and uh, unfortunately since we lost out in afghanistan a situation has come when the cr countries are being now brought in uh, by pakistan to sign uh, to for draft mous uh, like uh, some of the countries uh, for cpec whereas for cr countries the shortest route to warm water is uh, instc and this is something which we need to exploit and which we need to work on and our interest can work only if we are on in good books of all the segments and our, we must look at our national interest and therefore a balanced approach is necessary absolutely and shakti sena close the show for us with your concluding remarks thank you i think you know doha talked about creating a process that would lead to peace to settlement to cease fire at that in that sequence you know so i think india has a role to play not so much as vivek were rightly said by getting involved in domestic politics but as an honest friend who's a role model and who you can share exchange with and therefore will ability to bring people together because we are non threatening we have no interest in afghanistan beyond stability and development and that is india's strength and we should engage on it by being open to all afghans okay all right on that note then I'll